What's up? It's Power X, man. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove back. Shot it real on the pill. I won't tell how I feel. Trying to drown in this surf for real. All right, so we got Pyrex Whipper off the porch with us today. Yeah, man. How you feeling today, bro? Feeling good, man. Yeah. Appreciate you coming by today, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Yeah, no doubt, bro. So let's take it back, man. What part of Baltimore are you from? Originally from East Baltimore. Yeah. I grew up in the county. Okay. Then, but I stayed most of my time over west, bro. Yeah. Free the game. Shout out to LNG for the game, man. So what was your childhood like there growing up? Uh, it was it was Baltimore for real. It's different. It's a different experience than everywhere else, you know. Because it's like when you out here or when you in other places, you don't really know you in the hood till you know you in the hood. Like in Baltimore, you know you in the hood, like. This is what it is. If you if you if you're there, you know you cool right here. Or no, nah, you ain't cool right here. So it was really it was a, it was a good experience growing up until I got older. You feel me? Then when I got older, and got myself into more things. I had to figure some shit out. Baltimore is what Baltimore is. You feel me? Yeah, it's got a definitely reputation for being a very tough place to make it out of. Yeah, I love it though. I go back all the time. Yeah, you still got family up there. Hell yeah, all family up there. So, at what age would you say you jumped off the porch in Baltimore? The age I jumped off the porch, I would say about sixteen, because I was really skateboarding and like mm-hmm. doing artistic shit into that. And around sixteen, I started trying to, I guess you say, find myself. I found myself off the porch. Were you getting into any trouble back then? Not too much. When I got around like 17, 18, that's when I first started getting in trouble. Hmm. Definitely started getting in trouble. Like around 18, that's when I was fully, fully in it. What would you say is one of the biggest life lessons you learned while growing up there? Never let your guard down. <coughs> oh, shit. <coughs> See? <coughs> oh, my God. <coughs> Never let your guard down. Shit. <coughs> Never let your guard down. You good? <laughs> yeah, my shit, I'm good. They gonna make a meme out of that. <laughs> All right, and what would you say is one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome to get out of Baltimore and make it to where you're at today? Obstacles. Hmm. Money. Money. Um, money was definitely an obstacle. Real shit. All right, so how long you been making beats now? Uh, I've been making beats since I was 15. So it's been a cool minute now, I'm 22. Okay. Maybe 23. What had inspired you at first? Um. It was really just watching like videos of like Southside making beats on the tour bus with like Marco Flocka and shit like that. Yeah. That's what really got me going. So it was like, always seeing how the rap was turned out, you feel me? The rap was lit, and I'm like, damn, these beats are getting niggas moving, you feel me? Like, niggas can make a hundred songs, but if the beats ain't right, ain't nobody gonna move in the club. Like, it used to be like certain songs. I remember, uh, What's that song? Photo shoot from Gucci. Okay, yeah. Gucci man, yeah. That Is that beat. Drummer Boy? Uh, listen to this track. Yeah, yep, that was Drummer Boy. That was Drummer Boy. Yeah, that shit was crazy. At the time that shit came on in Baltimore, they used to go crazy when that song came on. That that yo guy he sat. Uh, 
definitely Yo Gotti sack. That shit crazy. Like even the Dreams and Nightmare shit. Mm. The Dreams and Nightmare when Yo Gotti dropped that. I mean, mm, when Meek Mill dropped that, that nigga gonna fry me for that. When Meek Mill dropped that, uh, <laughs> that shit was hard as fuck. I fuck with Meek though. Meek shit too hard. Yeah. I'm trying to work with Meek. So how'd you learn how to make beats? Were you self-taught? YouTube, like a motherfucker. Okay. YouTube gonna get you. It's gonna get you going. It's gonna get you where you need to be. I fuck with YouTube. Did you just start off with uh, Fruity Loops, or what were you using? Um, yeah, it was just Fruity Loops. Different than that. Fruity Loops. I still waiting on the same program I started with. So, what did your first beats sound like? Were they kind of like Southside beats, or my beats was trash? <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie to you. I feel like my beats was trash until I met, until I met Metro for real. Hmm. I feel like my beats was definitely trash. It was like sitting down watching him really be patient and break shit down and learn what sound selection was. You feel me? I ain't never know what sound selection was. I used to hear people say it all the time. I used to be like, nigga, nah, I'm gonna throw this sound in there with this because it sound good to me. But it's like, just because it sounds good to you don't mean it's a hit. You got to learn to adapt to certain air for real. Once I got around them, I was able to adapt to certain air. That's when I think I really teed up. Hmm. That shit was trash. <laughs> <laughs> so how long would you say it took you to develop your own sound? It took me a long time. And so I guess, right. At the Father of Four came out, I guess that's when I developed my sound for real. The slow beats with the crazy hi hats and that rim shot. And then Costa Rica kind of solidified it. Okay, yeah. So, how'd you end up in, in Atlanta? If you can't really, my whole, like I said, I can't really make money off beats in, in Baltimore. Like, in Atlanta, I know I could come here, work in the studio, they gonna buy some beats. They gonna buy some beats, they need beats, they rap, you feel me, every day. Somebody different in the studio, so. It's not really too many people in the studio in back in the you know. It is now, though. Yeah, it's starting to turn up up there. City on fire. You feel me, we got Roddy Rax, OTR Chaz, Free Lil X, Free YGG Tay, Free Sosa, Free Sleazy. Um, YG Tech for sure. Mm -hmm. He on fire. YG Tech on fire. He gonna be the next one to pop. He should have been pop for real. But he gonna be the next one to pop. Uh, so how'd you link up with uh, DJ Plug? I linked up with DJ Plug. I was in the studio with Damon Blue. Hmm. Yeah. We was at Love Street. He just walked in. I was playing beats. It was like you fire. I'm like, hell no. <laughs> it was like, nigga, you fine. I'm like, damn. Like, that's DJ Plug telling me that shit. It kind of shocked me at first, but then, like, as the session went on, it was like, they cool niggas. You feel me? They like my big brothers, you feel me now? They locked down with them for life. And then Bobby Critical. Shout out to Bobby. Yeah, they, they definitely, they got some heat. <laughs> they got some heat. Was a plug that convinced you to kind of move down here to Atlanta full time? Nah. It was my brothers. Okay. So, my brothers was just like, man, you got to stay down here. You ain't got really too much shit going on for yourself back in Baltimore. You ain't really doing nothing for real. So, this was honestly like the best option for me. I could make something out of nothing. At least get the chance to. Who were some of the first artists you worked with when you moved down here? Cash Out, my boy. I was definitely the first person I locked up with was Cash Out. Hmm. That's a good nigga. How'd you link up with him at first? Uh, Spud McKenzie. Okay. Shout out to Spud, man. You feel me? Definitely shout out to Spud. That's one of my big brothers, you feel me? From Baltimore. Grew up around that nigga. Him and my big brother, D'Ever, it was like this when I was growing up, you feel me? So 
I need him since I was right. Right. I'm still on the porch for real. So shout out to Spud for real. Had my back since young. What was one of the favorite songs you and Cash Out cooked up? It's this song called Whip It that he don't put out, that he just won't put out. He just won't put it out. <laughs> it's unreleased, though. Like, it's unreleased. I don't know why he won't put it out. Like, if Cash, if you see this, I'm going to leave that shit. Hmm. It's cool. We're going to fight, but I'm going to leave that shit. <laughs> So how'd you get your tag? The first one you had, was it the Pyrex Turn Me Up? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I was trying to engineer. Hmm. And I didn't know how to turn the headphones up. And my boy DJ was in the booth and he was like, Pyrex Turn Me Up? I'm like, yeah, nigga, I'm gonna use that for a tag. <laughs> Thirsty. I'm needing anything for a tag at the moment. Like, man, I need something. Hmm. It was cool though. It worked out for the meantime. Yeah. So I met Metro, and then he blessed me with the 21 tag, you know, and then 21 gave it the approval. Mm -hmm. Shout out to 21. And shout out to Offset, too, because he on that tag, too. That's my boy. Yeah. Yeah, I think some people probably thought you were from Zone 6 from that tag. <sighs> nah, I ain't from Zone 6. <laughs> I fought with a lot of people in Zone 6, though. So yeah. Shout out to Zone 6. Shout out to Escobar. Shout out to Tip. <clears throat> Definitely shout out to Tip and Escobar. I fought with them a lot. They always show me love. Yeah. And Nudie. Shout out to Nudie. So how'd you link up with Metro first? I was in the studio with Nudie. Okay. And then uh, he, they had called him. And then he was like, I got a session up there after. You feel me? And then I asked Nudie, I'm like, you think you gonna care if I stay up there? And he was like, shit, I don't know. You feel me? <laughs> so I just stayed up that bitch anyway. Hmm. And I asked much on my thing, and I said to his mother, he's like, I don't give a fuck. I just sat in that bitch. Yeah. It got to a point when that nigga got tired of making beats. He sat down for a little bit. I just started fucking with it. Hmm. And that was it. You remember what that first beat was? I remember. That shit was hard as fuck. Hmm. Did it get placed? Metro got so many beats, man. You getting a beat placed with him is like winning a lot of it. Hmm. I'm lucky I already got one. So what's it like cooking up with Metro? You got to be patient. Very patient. He's very, you got to be very patient. <laughs> About it, but it's every time I cook up with them, that should be great. They're musical genius. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll be like, Man, I don't even know how you think of this. Shit. He always finding like new hallway or something different to work with. Definitely top 10 and deserve where he at for sure. Real shit. So, when did you link up with Southside? Was it after Metro? <clears throat> Linked up with Young Sizzle right after I, it was like two months after being with Metro. Yeah. We came to the studio for real. Flea, his security, Metro security had brought him back into the room for real. And I was making beats. And he was like, Lil Nate, you hard. And I was like, oh shit, nigga, it's Southside. <laughs> <laughs> like a little motherfucking fan and shit. And then we were just cooking up. No, he ain't because he started rapping on my beats first. Hmm. And then we, and then he was like, damn, make all your beats hard as shit. But then he was like, you want to come with me to Miami? I went back to Miami with him. We was cooking up in Miami. And I've just been with him ever since, for real. Yeah, what does it mean uh, to you, you know, to have all these people that you looked up to fucking with you, like on a personal level at that? Um mean the world to me, you feel me, especially coming from where I come from. I just chase my dream. A lot of people got goals in different worlds. So stay true to myself and chase my own dream. Came out the way I always expected it to. So you feel me? I mean the world to me. My mother proud. My homies proud. I'm happy. You feel me? Shit. 
Ain't shit to worry about. So how'd your placement with uh, the baby come about? I was actually in the front room of uh, 11th Street making beats. And this nigga sent his security back there to come and be like, yo, we trying to play some beats with baby. And I'm thinking a little baby. <laughs> So I packed my shit up quick. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm trying to play some beats with little baby. You feel me? I go back there. Like, what the fuck is this nigga? I'm like, oh, what the, I don't know who the fuck this nigga is. You didn't know who the baby was? I ain't know who the fuck the nigga was. I'm like, who the fuck is this nigga? The nigga said baby. I don't see baby, nigga. <laughs> baby ain't that strange in this motherfucker. Bro. So at that moment, he was like, what's up? My name baby. Then my cameraman was like, nigga. That's the nigga with that song that's popping right now. I'm like, oh. And then he showed me, I'm like, oh. <laughs> damn, shorty shit is banging <laughs> for real. I, I, I feel bad. I'm walking this bit like, damn, I don't even know the nigga. So I made the beat. I go back in the other room. I made the beat in like five minutes. Mm. I go back in the other room, you feel me? Just mind my business. I ain't even know what the nigga was gonna do with it. I didn't even think he was gonna put it out. And his nigga texted me. He was like, yo. I'm like, what's good? He's like, this nigga just bodied this shit. I'm like, what you mean? So I go back there and I hear that shit. I look at this nigga. I'm like, oh, this nigga ready to take the fuck off. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know who this nigga is still, but he ready to take the fuck off. He got that one shit banging. And he put the song like this together in like 10 minutes. Hmm. Shorty was, shorty the truth. I fuck with him. Real genuine nigga. Yeah, I can't remember if that was like track two or track three on his album. It was right there at the front. It was up there. It's like, I think like three or four. One of them. It wasn't track two. Mm -hmm. so, shout, out, <clears throat> shout out to Jetson too, man. Yeah. Doing his thing. That's my boy. Shout out to Jetson. So what were those Dreamville sessions like? Fucking cluttered. <laughs> A lot of people in there. Hello, people, bro. There was so many people in there. I was just like, fuck. I ain't really want to play no beats because I was like so shy coming in. Like, I'm like, mm -hmm. no, nobody know who the fuck I am. You feel me? I got one placement. Like, then he was just like, my boy Reese. Reese was like, make some beats. Started making some beats. Reese made the song. Started, started Coastal Weekend. Then Vice hopped on. Then like, I don't know what happened. Oh, yeah, I fell asleep. You fell asleep? I fell <laughs> straight asleep. And then I woke up, and there was Slump God on the speakers. Hmm. And then when I seen Slump God on the speakers, I just heard that they kept playing the song. Right? They were like, nigga, you got one. I heard that song. I'm like, damn, these niggas turned. Shit hard. Then the next day, I came back, and Chase was in the room. And then Chase just did that shit for J. Cole. Hmm. And that shit was crazy, just being in the room. And while the beat playing over and over and then they just walking back and forth with the notepad. It was like watching that nigga Denzel rehearse for a role or some shit. Like that shit was crazy or some shit. Like that nigga. That nigga J. Cole. That nigga special, man. That nigga really special when it comes to this music shit. Mm -hmm. I heard some shit in there that didn't even come out. Or some songs in there that didn't even come out. My bad for cutting so much. I heard some songs in there that didn't even come out, man, from J. Cole. <sighs> Shorty. Shorty that. Hmm. Like, not even on no rapping, rapping type. Like, he was on some trap beats going crazy. Really? Really. Oh, J. Cole be going crazy. I'd have never expected. Is that where the Grammy nomination comes from? It was from the Dreamville work? Yeah, man. Appreciate them for having me, man. A lot of blessings came behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was your reaction when you learned it was nominated for a Grammy? I thought it was. I thought he was playing with me for him. Like <laughs> he was gonna text my phone, like "Nigga, you got nominated for a Grammy." I'm like, "All right, y'all, you're taking it too far." Because it was like I ain't gonna lie. Like a couple weeks before, I had got my first plaque. And then like the week after, I got another one. And then the week after, I got another one. So I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck going on? You know? Niggas text me like, you nominated for a Grammy. I'm like, 
That bullshit, bro. I'm like, through my phone. Nigga start calling me back to back to back. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, I'm gonna go look at this shit. My mama called me. And she was like, you know that album you worked on got nominated for a Grammy? I'm like, hell no. For real? <laughs> <laughs> That's when it really kicked in. I'm like, hell no, you bullshit. My shit was like, I swear. Then like, by the time I pulled it up and I looked at it, I was like, damn near ready to fall out, man. That shit was right. Not, it's just not even the fact that I don't even give a fuck. I ain't even winning or nothing. Like, it's the fact of being nominated for a Grammy. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Hell yeah. Niggas in Baltimore don't get nominated for a Grammy. So it's huge to me. What was that first plaque you got? I think it came for the Dream Book. Okay. I believe. Yeah, Dream Book. Can you even keep up with how many you got now? Hey, too crazy, but I'm up there a little bit. Yeah, so do you prefer to cook up with the artist present or just have your beats ready and present. just play? Yeah. Present. It's like, um, I can have my beats ready. It usually work out like that. But like, when I cook up, that's when it really be that I get the best result. Cause it's like you feel the vibe. I know what you know what type of time you want. So I'm gonna give you that beat the match whatever vibe you want. So how long you been rapping now? I've been rapping for a long time. I've been rapping for like since I've been making beats. Okay. But I ain't never been putting it out. I just like rap for myself. I might make music for myself. Yeah, so you put out that Separation Anxiety EP. What was that, last year? Yeah. <laughs> I saw you took it down then, too. Yeah, everybody keep asking me about that. Um, I mean, I like that. <laughs> feel like you've grown as a, as a rapper since then? Is that why you took it down? I just don't feel like it was good. Mm -hmm. I, I, a lot of people liked it, you feel me? But like, I don't feel like it was good. But this shit I'm on now, like the music I'm putting out now, videos, the project, the songs I'm working on, that's not even making a project, like mm -hmm. way better. Everything way better. Even down to the last song, I don't even want to put on a project, but way better than everything I did before. So it's, I'm not trying to go back to that. All right, so talk to us about Blood on the Hills. All right, so Blood on the Hills. I was in the Kush factory. I got some beats from Southside. I've been begging them for them beats because. It was a time we was in the studio with The Weeknd, him and Metro, and they was cooking up. And they was making hell of beats for him. And it was, The Blood on the Hills was one of the beats that he made for him. Oh, really? Yeah, but The Weeknd ain't picking. And like, just kept begging. I'm like, yo, bro, let me get that beat. Let me get that beat. Let me get that beat. And then one day, so I was like, you know what, y'all? Go ahead and get it. And then he gave me hell of beats after. So I did Chemist first. Oh, that's the song that's gonna be on the album. I did a couple other songs. I did Blood on the Hills like a couple months ago, for real. Like two months ago. Uh, the song, it kind of really described itself. You feel me? Broken hearted type shit. You feel me? That everyday love story. Uh, just talks about myself, for real. You gotta listen to the song to really understand. Listen to the lyrics. This shit ain't hard to decipher. I ain't saying too many like crazy punchlines or nothing. I ain't little, I ain't no little Wayne or nothing. You feel me? So, <laughs> I ain't been straight to the point. Yeah, and talk to us about the video. Is that mostly Spud's direction or do you have some input on it? I had some input on it, but shout out to Spud, man. He killed it. For taking my idea and taking it above and beyond, man. 
When I told him I wanted to really look like blood on the hill, she really made sure it looked like <laughs> everything was painted red. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So, especially with the wings and all the effects, man, that's blood went crazy. Can't wait till this next video drop, though. Mm -hmm. He went crazy. Spud be going crazy. Shot was Spud McKenzie. Did you expect it to do as good as it's done? It's over a hundred thousand in what two weeks? Yeah, between the two uh, pages I put it up on, it's at two hundred fifty. So, oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, it's more than I expected. Way more than I expected, to be honest. So, you know, I ain't really expecting too much out of it. So, whatever I get, I can appreciate. To be honest. And the EP's dropping on your birthday? Hell yeah, 10-10. You, you got a title picked out for the EP? Blood on the Hills. Okay. There you go. Um, the intro really, what? The Blood on the Hills, the song is really like the intro, so it really fits and kind of describes what you're going to hear on the tape. You might get like, you're going to get like, Two, two times that one. You feel me? But mostly, it's the most of our. That's about it. And it's all south side, right? Hell yeah. Do you like rapping over your own beats or other producers' beats? I love rapping on my own beats, man. Right? I like making music, bro. Like, it don't really matter who beats it is. Like, as long as it be fine, like, I just love making music. I want to be one of the biggest artists. I'm going to do this shit one day. Just take this shit one day at a time, though. Get these songs out first. Yeah. So how do you decide which beats to keep for yourself, which ones to send out? Um, I don't because I don't really put my own music out. So since I just started putting my own music out, I guess I got to figure that out. <laughs> Cause usually I just somebody rap on it, dub the song. Cause I don't really care about it that much. But now I guess I start separating them and shit. Yeah. But I usually make the beats for myself. Whatever I make on the spot. So. All right, what's next for you, Pyrex? Whatever God throws my way. Taking it one day at a time, man. Uh, trying to tee up his artist, so I guess I gotta push this full throttle, you know. And um, I got some songs with Herb on his tape. I've been working with Shaq, so we're working with a lot of different artists too. I don't want to do too many name drop. So as far as that's far as production. Any artists you haven't collabed with that you, you know, kind of got like on the bucket list that you really want to work with? Like I said, me, I fought with Lil Baby, Lil Baby Heart. Uh, Kendrick Lamar, Baby King. Side of baby, side of baby lit. That would be hard right there. Yeah, side of baby lit. Then we got to do something side of baby. Mm hmm. Frank Ocean, Tyler Creator, ASAP Rocky. You know, the list can continue. Anybody I didn't work with, to be honest. All right, any shout outs before we wrap this up? Free Sosa, Free Sleazy, Pretty Gang, man. Shout out to Chaz, shout out to Roddy, shout out to White Boy, shout out to Izzy, shout out to Jug, shout out to Chopper, shout out to my mama. I love you, mama. Fuck these hoes, get money, and that's it. Shout it real on the pill, I won't tell how I feel. Trying to drown in this surf for real. Stop describing me herbin'